What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with another review, and in this case is going to be a novel review for one that came out um, on September 1st and is in the first book in a trilogy of novels, and that novel is Thrawn Ascendancy Chaos Rising, so basically we get to see more about the history and backstory of how Thrawn came to power and how potentially he came into the service of the Empire or the events that led up to that. Um, because we do know about how he, or his rise through the ranks of the Empire, we know of his team up with um, Vader and their missions together, but we don't know really about what happened with his time in the Chiss Ascendancy, or any of his real backstory, or how he came to be as good of a, or how he has such a good strategic mind that we know from his various backstories. So, in... Um, Thrawn Ascendancy Chaos Rising, we see how Thrawn is picked to be a part of the Mint family. Um, we learn more about the nine families of the Chiss and how they're the ruling power structure of the Ascendancy. Uh, we do get to see more of the um, family structure of how um, family members are, be are um, essentially the most stable part of the families and essentially nothing can happen to them, but then if you're a friend of the family, so to speak, um, you get certain benefits and can rise so far and things like that, but you're in a more precarious position because if you do things that are not in the interest of the family, then you can be kicked out, or you can generally be more easily stolen away from the family. Um, the most effective comparison that I could make while reading the novel was it felt a lot like the family structure and hierarchy of um, the Mafia, the Italian Mafia, just because of um, how um, family members are um, in, made, part of the family, how you can be a made man, um, how different members of the family are treated compared to other members of the hierarchy and all of that. So overall, the family structure was very intriguing, and we get to see how Thrawn, as his great military mind, and um, rising military mind um, interacts with various members of his own family and also other parts of the family. Um, so we do learn um, early on that he has a great aptitude for the military, so that's why he's brought on with the Myth family. Um, and he's given that chance to learn and succeed and rise in the family, and he does rise pretty high. But he's also demoted a couple of times just because of some of the actions he takes. Um, in general, the Ascendancy, uh, we, and we learned this in his uh, Rise in the Empire, is that um, the Chiss Ascendancy doesn't um, take aggressive actions against potential threats. They only react to active threats against them. So that's part of, one of the things that um, Thrawn continually rubs against. They uh, to contain. They talk, mention a few times about how he crosses the line minimally just because of that gray area, but there are there's one or two times where he does go far across the line. Um, and one of the plot points towards the end of the, or about, probably about two thirds of the way into the novel, and it's not necessarily the final end scheme, but it paves the way for that, is that um, he jump. He creates a scenario where he creates that engagement where the um, an opposing faction in the um, chaos, which I'll get to in a little bit, um, creates that hostile action, so it creates a need for that ascendancy to uh, go against them. So in general, things like that is what, Th is what Thrawn excels at because he understands other um, beings and races based on their art, but then because of the Chiss's um, passive nature against um, aggressive actions, they, he kind of wants to create that need to um, create to go against other, or to create those preventative ma measures, even though it was him that he created the need for that. So overall, a very good um, introduction to um, Thrawn's rise in the Ascendancy, and we um, overall learn um, <laughs> kind of how, or in this novel we learn against, or we see his first major victory against a major opposition, um, 
in that we he uh, learn or we finish the novel with his learning about how he can see uh, he treats people as assets and he can see learn about people through art but because of his interactions with the one of the main admirals who he go, goes through the ranks of the ascendancy with is that she tr treats people as people so when they get to the final conflict of um, dealing with a guy who wants to take out Thrawn because Thrawn is the only one who, who's been able to be him. I think his name is Yvi, Yvi or something along those lines. Um, he, that Admiral, in her dealings, thinking of people as people, um, understands how the uh, how an oppressed culture is going to react when one of their own is uh, killed in battle because that other race um, debates all potential thought lines, and when one thought line is taken out, they're they feel deprived of that thought line, so that's when they take aggressive actions against um, other um, hostiles. So things like that. There's a lot of that, not necessarily gray lines, but it's understanding how the cult, different cultures in the chaos treat each other and how they interact with other races. So it's a very good look about at that and how Thrawn deals with it and how other people deal with it. And then we also continue to see how Thrawn has the inability or is unable to see the political nature behind things. So while he has that base understanding that he can treat uh, politics just like the mil his military tactics, that he has to understand the underlying nature. Um, the Admiral um, tries to get him to understand that politics is more fluid than milita the military, so it's harder to keep track of things. So while Thrawn may, have un may analyze a current power st uh, structure and standing between families by the time he wants to implement it things might have changed so while they're both right it kind of leans more towards what the admiral thinks of politics so um one of the caregivers that Thrawn um helps to um nurture throughout his rise is made a part of the mid family and is basically kept there to kept in a position near Thrawn to help um, him navigate politics and ensure that um, he doesn't do anything crazy or that he's not taken advantage of or to uh, bring things about uh, basically so that no one is trying to take advantage of him without him knowing about it or at least bring things up with him because he doesn't uh, um, get taken advantage of and we kind of see that in the prior novels uh, for Thrawn when we see him in the Empire that um, Commander Eli kind of fulfills that same role that um, Eli helps Thrawn navigate the political climate and the cultural climate of the Empire and um, help Thrawn understand those the politics of the Empire which he doesn't, that Thrawn doesn't necessarily grab the full extent of, so um, things like that are very well done in this novel, and I can't wait to see what they do in the next couple of books, so um, this, this is the first novel in the in a set of three, so I can't wait for the next novel to see what the next threat is. Uh, we are left in closing with a potential threat, or the next threat to take, who that wants to take down the Chiss Ascendancy. So the main villain in the, this first novel wasn't necessarily the big bad. Um, he had reports with other people and that other guy, or the other group, um, was essentially trying to work through a direct measure to take down the Ascendancy. But since that didn't work because of um, Thrawn's actions, we'll see how they um, bring that up in the next book or the third book. Um, and a bit of projection is that I'm thinking that the third book is going to probably deal with the exile of Thrawn, or maybe even the second book is going to cause that, and the third book is going to merge that dealings with um, the exile, and then how the Empire, or Thrawn's introduction to the Empire, maybe some of his time in the exile, or what he did during that time. So, overall, a good novel, um, and of course the big factor in the, the, the first novel and the, the, what potentially could be the next novel or what potentially could be in the next novel is 
what they how they deal with the chaos is what was where all of these different cultures live um it's hard to navigate it's hard to move around but we do have different cultures that um live there um so a lot of them seem to live a lot closer to each other but navigation is difficult because they don't have anyone like bitches to help them um navigate all the, the fluctuations in the area that they live um and I did like that, and that or actually that actually takes me into the next point. My final point is that I liked the introduction of um, what the Chis call the Skywalker program, um, in that they have what can basically be described as Chis who have force powers, but they at some point in their youth they lose that ability to use the force. So the Skywalker program nurtures children to use that so that they can so that the chips can navigate the chaos in a in fewer jumps than would otherwise be needed. So it's a it's a pretty interesting storyline and it's a good or an interesting thing to see that when um, Thrawn first meets up with Anakin that because Anakin's name is Skywalker, Thrawn gets confused but um, because Anakin can use a force it kinda Thrawn puts a base level um, version of putting two and two together so we know that Thrawn has an inkling of what Anakin can do but not the full extent until they meet up with each other um, so overall uh, very and it's a minimal interaction when they're meeting when Anakin goes off to say Padme and then um, Thrawn I, and I suspect that Thrawn knew who Vader was but because Vader denied Anakin surviving then he let it be but I know have that inkling that Thrawn knew who Vader and or Vader slash Anakin were, but I like that interaction, initial interaction with um, Thrawn and his Skywalker, um, Sherry. That uh, the name kind of, was kind of confusing, but we know that, or we see that um, the Skywalker program for the Chiss is essentially ch- um, child children who are sensitive in the Force, but for some reason either because of biology or because they don't have a full understanding of the program or because the children are um, having to use the force so much that they eventually can't um, that they lose that connection or whatever for whatever reason they lose that connection over time but they're essentially uh, force users that the chase use to navigate um, through hyperspace more quickly so that's all there is for this particular review overall I give the novel about a grade of an A um, it's probably one of those novels that I read faster than usual just because it's so int- intriguing and interesting. It's good to have more backstory on the characters. Um, it's easy to get lost with some of the family hierarchy and family names, but essentially once you understand that Thrawn's position as a captain was moving up and down and that he's not necessarily part of the family until he um, becomes... Um, a full member of the family like Sherry did in the story Um, his situation is precarious and he can still be kicked out of the family so that's one of those things that they touched on in the novel when one of the rival families tries to get Thrawn to um, join up with them Um, and I'm sure we'll be um, delved into further once they um, get into the point where Thrawn is exiled or once he crosses that line um to so far to the point that um, they can no longer keep him in the family. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to get in touch with me, provide your own feedback, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But that's all there for, for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next.